so welcome back in the last video we have talked about uh, interview question in which we have specified some input so this is this this was our input right so this is the input right so what we'll do we'll, do, we'll take the same example so for that let me just copy this part from here okay and if you have not watched this video so if you directly jump to the coding part so make sure you go back to my previous video where I have uh, talked about the steps to implement so the question was you have this input which is this value now you have to sort this element in that frequency okay so what we'll do is we'll just copy this line here okay so i have this array which is 4316 4364 let me close the window okay now so i have this value which is 4316-4364 I want to sort this uh, array in such a way that the it will print the output will be so this is my input so this this is what we, ha we are getting as input and then we have an output which looks something in this way so it will return 4 uh, 3 4 4 4 then 3 3 then 6 6 and 1 so why 4 is because it is appearing in the input for 3 times then y33 three three is because it appears for two times then we have 66 six for two times and then one for only because it appears only once okay now to do that we have to follow four steps so let's again go for the steps the first step is let's create an array first which we have missing here so let's create an array called as a okay i will use this array as a and this array elements will be 4 3 1 uh, 6 4, 3, uh, uh, 6 and 4. So these are my elements, right? So I got an array. Now, uh, since in the further steps we need to create that 2D array, if you remember, in the last video we talked about this uh, two-dimensional array. So to work with this, what we need is we have to say B. So we'll create a two-dimensional array. The, si the problem is we don't need the size of this, right? Because it can be, uh, so this the, uh, the 2D array, so this is the number of columns. So if you talk about this one column, so this is one column, second column, third column, and fourth column, sorry, fourth row, so, sorry, I, I'm talking about the rows. So we have four rows and we have two columns, right? So we have four rows and two columns. So in this example, we know we have four columns, sorry, four rows, right? But let's say we have different values. At that time, how would you know the number of rows, right? So for sure, the number of rows will be less than or equal to the length of A. Right, so it will be sure that it will not be on. It will not be more than length of a, and the number of columns we know for sure is two. So one uh, one column will specify the number, which actual number, and the second column will define the occurrence or the frequency. Now once you got this two array, now the step was we need, we want to sort array a right. So we have to say sort again. We can write the whole code here itself. But to simplify things, again we can write, we can use this number of lines to sort an array, right? So we can use we can implement bubble sort, we can use merge sort, we can use quick sort. So you can write that code here. But what I will do is I will create a method called a sort. I will pass a, and this a will return me a. Okay, this will return me an array. So in this sort, I am passing an array. I am getting an array. Okay. Now since I don't want to create an object here, I will directly go with a method which is public static void or not written void, it will return me an array of integers and the name of the method will be sort. This sort will take a parameter as a, a what parameter, let's say int a itself. So we got a parameter, okay, we need to do some operations here, but before that I will just return a because all the operations I have to apply on a, right? Then question arise, how to sort this array? Now we can use bubble sort, we can use any of the sort you you like. What I will do is, here is, I will use one, one type of sort sorting technique, so in which I have to define two, uh, uh, what do you say, a nested loop, which I start with zero. It goes till a dot length, because the length of the array. And then you have to say I plus plus. So if you're not clear how to sort an array, you can just uh, search for a video on bubble sort. Uh, or any any favorite sort you like so yeah so to sort this we have to use uh, 
one more array which is or sorry one more loop inner loop which is j equal to it will start from i and j less than a dot length and j plus plus so how it exactly how actually the sorting technique works we have to compare two elements at a time so if it i of j is greater than i of i of sorry a of i is greater than i of j in this scenario you have to swap okay otherwise you don't have to swap in this scenario you have to swap how to swap two variables there are multiple ways you can do this right we can use third variable okay we can use the plus minus operations or we can use xor operations so if you don't if you don't know what i'm talking about you can just search for a swapping code in my video tutorial so there will be swapping of two numbers in this scenario i'll be using the uh, temporary variable just to make things very simple we can use any any of the technique let me go with the temporary temporary part so I will say t equal to a of i, then a of i is equal to a of j, and then we'll say a of j is equal to t. So by this we we have sort we have swapped, and once you finish all this loop, you will be getting this sorted array. Cool. Okay. Now that was your first step. Let's move to the second step in which you have to populate a two-dimensional array. So we have to populate this array now which is two-dimensional. Then question arises: how to populate it. So for sure, for sure after sorting you will be getting this value right. This is your output which is 1, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 6, 6. Okay. Uh, just to demonstrate we have sorted this. Let me print the value so that we'll be, at least we'll, be, we'll have that confidence that yeah it is sorted now. Well, we can move towards the next point. So let me just print. Uh oh, what I'm doing? Okay, let me print uh, the value of i. This is how you print an array, right? And we'll also print a comma just to specify. Just to finish with this. And if I run this now, so after sorting, okay. So after sorting, you got this. Let me just remove uh, print ln. Okay. Now after sorting you got this value which is 1, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 6, 6. So that, was, that is what we are expecting here, right? So we got this output. So at least we have done with the first step which is sort the array. In this, in this part we will be doing the, sec the second step which is create, an, uh, create 2D array as this one. Now to achieve this, so what we will do is, we will take the first element which is 1 and we will put it here. So what is this? This is, uh, this is number of rows. And this is number of columns, right? So, the number of to count the number of rows, I will use a variable called as x. Okay. So now, how to use x here? So what I will do is I will go above main and I will create a variable which is static int x. The initial value of x will be zero. So once you got this zero, it will define the column, the row number which is here. So this is your first row. So the first row, first value will be one for sure. The first value here will be here doesn't matter if it is maybe it, it will be it will for different example it might be 2 so it will be 2 here if it is 3 it will be 3 here so first element will be the first value of an array now how to do that what we'll do is before I don't want to print now the, this now let's remove that so do that we'll say b of x and 0 which simply means the, it simply specifies the the first value because the value of x is 0 right the first value will be a of 0 for sure okay so this uh, after sorting you'll be getting one what was the value it was one three three four 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 six six so this one will be coming here as a first element of the two dimensional array now to populate other very other values we'll use a for loop which will start with i int i equal to instead of zero we'll start with one because zero is done here and i less than a dot length and we'll say i plus plus okay so we have to start from the first value so we have to start with the first value to the last value okay so we'll check one if it is one it will be one see one year if it is three okay now since three is not matching with one it will create a new variable here or new value which is three and you will update this value as one if you if you got one more three so it will check here okay we already have a three here so let's increment this to two then we have 4. Now we don't have any 4 here. It will go for 4. Well, what if just me? Let me just write this. What what it will be? What we want to do? So what I want to do is I want to construct this two-dimensional array. 
here. So the first value will be 1 and the number of occurrence of 1 is 1. Then I have the next occurrence as 3. So if the next occurrence is 3 which is not 1, it will jump on the next row and it will write 3 here. By default the counter will be 1. Then it will go for the next 3. If it, it will see. So this 3 is already there. So this 3 is equal to the last value which means I have to update the occurrence. Then it will go to 4. Now since 4 is not there, it will create one more 4. That means we have to increment, uh, we have to go for the next uh, row and then by default value will be 1. If your next value is 4, it will check. Okay, we ha already have a 4 here. So what I will do is I will just say 2. Then it will jump to this 4. Then it will say, okay, we already have a 4 here. Now let's make it 3. And then we have 6. So it is not 6, it is 4 last value. Then it will create a new row which is 6. Default value will be 1. It will check for the next value which is 6 again. So it will check, okay, we already have a 6 here. Let's make it 2. Okay, so this is how you have to construct uh, another 2D array. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll apply a for we'll apply a if condition. If a of i is equal to equal to a of i minus one. If this is the scenario, we just have to increment. We just have to increment this value. Okay, with this uh, this one. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll say b of x of one because this is the second column. So if you want to represent the second column, we have to use b of x of one, which will be equal to b of x of one plus 1 simple right now if it is doesn't it if it doesn't matches okay example um, uh, okay I have done with 3 I'm moving towards 4 now now 4 is not there right so it will execute the else part so in this else part what we do is we just have to say x plus plus so what we are doing is uh, we are incrementing the row number so if your last value doesn't match with the current value, it will go for the next row. So if your last value does not match with the current value, it will go for the next row. So we have to say x++. plus plus. Now since we have specified x++, plus plus, we have to copy this value 4 and we have to put it here. And to do that, we have to write b of x of 0 is equal to a of i. Cool. That's it. Now we have done with the population. So we got this 2D array which is populated. Now the next step is we need to sort this 2D array. Okay. But since we are uh, we are making a video a big one, we'll take a break. We'll continue in the next part of the tutorial. Okay. So that's it from the, this video, this part in which we have uh, we have done with this two steps. In the next part, we'll be doing the remaining two steps. So if you liked this video, do thumbs up, do subscribe for the further videos and thank you so much for watching.